hearing from someone, um, one of our baseball coaches here at the Ohio State University, um, specifically the pitching coach. Uh, he played here from 04 to 08 and was drafted to the Detroit Tigers. And now he has a wonderful family, so he can give us some insight on the college professional and after professional life. So please help me give a big welcome to Dan DeLucia. Thanks, guys. Two out of three of those guys were old teammates of mine, so uh, you can tell the uh, personality of the baseball team a little bit. <laughs> um, but anyways, it's great to be here. I'm glad to, uh, I got my cheat sheet here just in case I forget my story. But um, <laughs> um, So I was asked tonight to tell my story, uh, kind of my testimonial of you know how I came to Christ and, and my faith journey. And uh, I give a lot of baseball talks, but I don't give an, uh, get an opportunity to talk about my faith a lot, so um, I was definitely excited when I was asked. Um, my story wasn't really uh, a light bulb kind of moment or a watershed moment. Um, it wasn't something that hit me right away. It was kind of a gradual process. Uh, I may be, you may be a lot like me where I grew up in a Christian home, uh, went to a Christian high school, went to church every Sunday. Um, so some of you may have similar backgrounds to me. I then came here, played at Ohio State, uh, graduated from the Fisher College of Business, was drafted in 2008, played uh, with the Detroit Tigers and Toronto Blue Jays organization for four years before coming back here um, and coaching. Um, so professional baseball is kind of where my story took its uh, transformation. We're on the road a lot with baseball and we didn't have a, a lot of time to go to church on Sundays. We're always on the road, practice, games, things like that. So. Um, Major League Baseball provided a nonprofit organization called Baseball Chapel. So I thought, well, uh, since I can't go to church, uh, I might as well go to this Baseball Chapel. Um, it was 15 minutes once a week on a Sunday. and I uh, figured going to that, I could get my good luck in for the week or um, my, you know, God keep me safe for the week. Kind of those blessings that, that some people ask, almost like a transactional kind of relationship. Um, and, and that's where really there were some challenging questions that I experienced when going through that baseball chapel. The biggest overarching one, and that's what I'm gonna talk a little bit tonight about, um, is how good is good enough, okay? How good is good enough? And it was an interesting question. The leader of, of the baseball uh, chapel asked, if you died today and you were face to face with God at the gates of heaven and he asked you, uh, why he should let you win, what would you say? And the majority of people, including myself, said, well, I'm a good person. I can get in because, you know, I follow the Ten Commandments. I, um, I haven't killed anyone lately. Um, <laughs> I don't steal. And, and I'm, I'm a good citizen and all those, you know, works-based um, things that I thought would get me into heaven. So he used an analogy that I thought was interesting. If you think about a ladder, think about a hundred-foot ladder, and you've got God at the very top rung, okay? And think about the worst person ever, you know, like Hitler at the, at the bottom rung, okay? Um, where, where do you stack up? Which rung are you on? How close are you to the top? And what is that based off of? I mean, what do you have to do to move yourself up? And even the person sitting next to you or one of your teammates, how do you stack up compared to that? Uh, so those questions, those questions really got me thinking. Um, and it was interesting, again, you know, I knew all the Bible stories growing up, and, and I thought, yeah, that being a good person, I'm, I'm most likely closer to the top, but still that didn't really fully give me an answer. So the leader of the, of the baseball chapel said, you know, let's keep this simple, okay? And he went to Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, and I'll, I'll read that for you. It said, for, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So essentially, this hit me like a punch in the face. I realized that, um, you know, it wasn't works. I can't earn my way <coughs> to heaven just based on the things I'm doing, not doing, the sins I committed, the sins I haven't committed yet. It, it's not about that. It really, when it comes down to it, it's the relationship that, that he wants you to have with him. So... That's where my transformation really started. And, and there was more questions that came out of this. Um, 
you know, it, it basically showed me the difference between knowing about God and knowing God. Does anybody go to Rock City Church here? So, if I, well, okay. But if it was here on Sunday, you heard Pastor Chad talk about that. And that's essentially, I mean, that's exactly what happened. It was knowing God, knowing, uh, knowing God versus knowing about him and all the Bible stories. Again, I grew up in the church, so I knew those, but I didn't have the relationship with him, which is ultimately what he wants to get you up to that top rung with him and would ultimately get you to answer that question of how good is good enough. Okay, so eight years later, I feel like I've become more of a mature Christian. Um, and in that, you know, I, I'm constantly working on my relationship with God, but um, there's three main questions um, that I've discovered that every person wants to know and needs to know. And that's, who am I? What is my purpose? And how shall I live? Okay, and, the, and you have to have them in that, those orders that order because if you don't it's well how shall I live I don't know I'll go party and I'll do whatever I want okay so who am I is the defining question that starts everything okay so I'm gonna do something real quick I think my time's running out I only have uh, seven minutes but, um, so real quick take a pen out you have a piece of paper in front of you, you can write it on your hand okay so this is a little exercise that hit me as, as my in my journey is think of all the roles in your life Okay, you're a brother. Well, you don't even have to write it down. All right, don't worry about it. You're a brother, you're a sister, you're a son, you're a daughter, you're a baseball player, you're a hockey player, a wrestler, you're a driver, a trash taker outer, a cake cooker, anything that you can imagine what your role in, is in that life. Take those roles away. Okay, and I want you to write down just a number on a scale from one to ten. Okay, one being the lowest, ten being the highest. Uh, where you rank yourself if you take all those roles out of your life. And I'll give you 10 seconds to do it because, again, my time is compressed here. So, again, if you take all of those roles out of your life, how would you rank yourself? Okay? Show of hands, who's, who's one to five? No one to fives. You know, the baseball guys. <laughs> okay? Who's five to ten? Half the people that don't know what I'm going for. Okay, <laughs> who's brave enough one to five to tell me what, why they rank their number the way they did um, and the reason for it? One through five, someone, anyone. I got, I got, I was blown away by this. I was, I didn't have a clue when someone first did this to me. Anybody, one through five. Can Without all those things, it's hard to describe who I really am. Okay, they said without all those things, it's hard to describe who I really am. Okay. How about a five through 10 person? I'm pretty sure I saw hands at five. <laughs> Anybody? Yeah. Well, when you have a relationship with God, you realize that your identity is not in all the things you do, but in Christ. Boom. So what was your number? Uh, I had to take a number. Okay. <laughs> Go with a 10. I mean, that's it right there. So essentially, if you're lower on that rung, and it hit me because Everybody, most people define themselves in their roles here. Whatever sport you're playing right now, that's probably, this, that's probably the high point of your life, right? So a lot of people are defining themselves by their roles. The problem is when those roles are taken away, what are you left with? And if you answered one to five, and that's okay. I did too the first time I was asked that, you know, eight years ago when I, when I started my journey here. And that's truly, you know, if you can identify yourself being in Christ and knowing God and having that relationship, everything will fall into order. But if you have it reversed, it's going to be tough to answer that question. That goes back to that first question, who am I? And answers it pretty definitively. So anyways, I think my time's up. Um, in conclusion, I will say is I was recently in your shoes. Okay, I'm 31 now, so almost a decade ago. Um, you know, I played here. But as young adults, you guys are going to have to make decisions, okay, and, and it's, you're going to constantly be pressured from outside sources, whether it's, you know, what job am I getting, your status, cars, the home you're buying, money, there's, there's constant outside pressures, okay, and you guys have choices as young adults, okay, um, your choice and desire to have a relationship with Jesus and with God will, will be the most gratifying decision you can make if you just give it a chance, so. That's it. I appreciate your time, and uh, good luck.